chapter 20, the Vav consecutive, and then we're going to look at some more Hebrew accents, the Revia and the Tifcha. This chapter, we're going to look at the Vav consecutive, and the Vav consecutive is a very prominent feature of uh, Hebrew narrative, and uh, the form is not too bad. There's only basically two forms of the Vav consecutive, but then we'll look at the uh, function of it, and again, that's not too bad either. Okay, for the uh, form of the Vav consecutive, if you see section 2 of chapter 20, we have past time and we have um, future time. And so for past time, the name of the form will be Vayiktol, and that's based on this form. Upon this word here, the Vayiktol form. And as you can see, it is uh, an uh, imperfect and then it has a vav attached, and that vav is pointed like an article. And this is a, what they call a vav consecutive. Now, you can have any person of the imperfect, and again, with the vav pointed, let's say, like an article. That's what it resembles. And uh, <coughs> uh, you've got to remember, the only other one that's going to be a real problem would be the um, first common singular. In the first common singular, of course, we begin with the aleph, And of course, when we try to point this like an article, the Aleph obviously will reject the Dagish uh, Forte, and you'll lengthen to a Kametz. And so, um, the, this is the form of the Vav consecutive for the past tense. Now, really, these Vav consecutives are simple past tense, and the Vav sort of adds an and or a then or and then, something like that nuance to it. But uh, again, normally when you see an imperfect, of course, you think of future tense. But when you add the Vav consecutive, it's really not an um, imperfect in the sense of a future. It's actually what's called a preterite tense or a simple past. And if you'll look at the footnote down below, I explain that to you. But perhaps as a beginning student, it, it's best to see this Vav almost like a magical Vav that changes a future into a past. And again, that's not accurate, but uh, as a beginning student, sometimes that's not a bad way of looking at it. And again, if you have questions, look at that first footnote. That'll tell you that this is a simple past tense. I know it looks just like a regular imperfect, but there is a difference that you would see later on uh, as we get into the chapters later in the book. So this is a vav consecutive for the past. Again, it's a vav pointed like an article uh, with what looks like an imperfect. For the future... What it is, it's like a perfect, and you can see we call it a vocatal T. And so this one is based on the perfect. And then you put the vav again on the front of it. And uh, by putting that vav on the front of it, uh, we're making this into a future. And so again, uh, though this is probably, this is not accurate what I'm about to tell you, it's probably best as a beginning student just to view this as a magical vav that again transforms this perfect into a future. And uh, if you see it that way, uh, I think it's going to be easier for you right now. Later on we'll get into more details about exactly what we're looking at. But again, uh, on this form it's just a simple vav. It's a vav conjunctive that's placed right onto a perfect. And uh, of course, as you look at uh, section 2, uh, if you notice, I have different ways that you can point the, um, the Vav conjunctive according to, of course, what's here and what's underneath it and so forth. So you want to keep that in mind. But again, this would be for future tense. This would be, and I will kill, whereas with that other one I gave you, like the Vayiktol, and uh, he killed. Okay. If you look now at uh, section 3, we have the meaning of the Vav consecutive. And as I've said to you, it's a very important uh, aspect of uh, Hebrew narrative. And uh, <coughs> I give you an example of past time in the first section of 10-3, of 23, excuse me. And what I give you is a, a sentence. And in that sentence, what you get is a series of verbs. So uh, in the example I give you, it's the king remembered the book of the Lord, and then he wrote to the people a commandment, and then he judged, and then he kept, and so forth. You have a series of verbs. 
Uh, frequently what Hebrew will do is it will start with a perfect, because the perfect is a past tense. But if it's going to continue, you know, this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, if you're going to get that type of construction in Hebrew, frequently you'll start with a perfect, and then you'll continue that perfect with a series of vav consecutives with those imperfects, the vayiktol form for the past tense. And so in that example, as you see, I start off with a perfect. Uh, we start off with zakar, uh, which is a perfect, but then... It's continued with a series of these uh, uh, vav consecutive constructions, uh, like this. And there's a series of these things. He remembered, and then he wrote, and so forth and so on. And so this is the way Hebrew likes to do uh, a narrative. Now, instead of having a, a perfect leading off a series of these vav consecutives, you can also have the form vayahi. And, of course, no dagesh there because of this so-called skin and levy rule. So uh, certain letters with vocal schwa will omit the dagesh forte. That's why we do not have the, the pointing like this with the dagesh uh, forte. And, again, instead of starting off with a perfect and then continuing with a, ver a series of vayiktol forms, uh, you can start off with a vayahi and then continue that with a series of vayiktol forms. And, really, even in a Hebrew story, what you can do is start it with a vayiktol form. Like really, this is a vayiktol form here. And then again, just continue there. So sometimes they'll begin with a vayiktol and then continue it with a vayiktol. It, there's really a lot of flexibility in Hebrew on how you uh, can do these uh, vav consecutive constructions. Now, if you're going to do a future, if you're going to tell a story uh, that uh, uh, he will remember, then he will write, then he will do this, and then he will do that, what you start off with frequently this time is an imperfect, which again is a future tense. And then you have a series of the vakatal T forms. In other words, the conjunctive of attached directly to a perfect, which gives you again a future tense. <coughs> and number two, you can see an example of that, where the king will remember the book of the Lord, and then he will write, then he will judge, then he will keep. So as you can see there, we start with an imperfect and continue that with a series of simple vavs attached to a perfect that, again, gives you a future tense time. And again, this gives you that idea of succession. This happens, and then this happens, and then that happens. Okay. If you go to section four, we have the vav consecutive with an infinitive construct. And again, this is very common in Hebrew narrative. And... Um, you can see the example that I give you. Again, if it's going to be in past time, normally, again, they'll start off with this vayahi uh, construction, and it was. They'll start off with this, and then it's followed by an infinitive construct. And the infinitive construct, of course, is without tense, but really this vav consecutive construction here, the vayahi, will set the tense for the following infinitive construct. So that infinitive construct we will translate as a past tense. And that infinitive construct will have either a kaf or a bait, but never a lamed on it, a preposition, of course, on the front of it. And you want to translate that really as a temporal clause, when, as, something like that. And then again, if you're going to be in the past tense, you're going to continue that infinitive construct with a series of vav consecutives, the vayiktol ones, for a, again, for past tense. And so as you can see the example, uh, this is very literal, and it was as the remembering of the king, the book of the Lord. And again, you can translate that, and it happened when the king remembered the book of the Lord. Uh, again, making it into a um, temporal clause. And then the following vav consecutive, uh, that he wrote, the pe uh, he wrote to the people and so forth. And so again, this is a very common construction. If you're going to make this a future tense, Instead of having the vayahi, which is, again, a vayiktol form, you want to do the va simple vav, the conjunctive vav, plus the perfect, haya, and now, again, you're setting the story in future time. And so the infinitive construct this time will be translated as a future. And so as you can see, it will be uh, in the remembering, or again, it will be when the king will remember, as I write here, the book of the Lord. 
And then if you want to continue the future, again, you'll have a series of these uh, Vakatalti forms, or again, these uh, Vav conjunctives attached to perfects, and that'll give you some uh, future time. Next is section five, and in section five, we talk about the Vav consecutive with a key. And so a lot of times you'll get a Vayahi again, or a Vahaya for the future. It's court if you want it to fu be future or past time, but Vayahi will be for the past. And then you'll have a key, and again, the key is another way of giving you a temporal clause. And then again, you'll have a series of those Vav consecutives, the Vayiktol forms for past tense, and Vakatal T forms for the future. And again, you can see those and how they work. And then in section six, we have some more uh, accents. This time we have the Revia and the Tifcha. The, uh, let's look at the Revia first. The Revia is a diamond-shaped accent. Looks something like this, a little diamond shape. It, it will be ab above the accented syllable of a word. And uh, again, what it does is it divides words. It's not as strong a divider as a Zahakef, Katon, uh, or Gadol, or certainly not as strong as an Athnach. But still, the Revia is a very strong um, breaker, a disjunctive accent. And so, again, if we have these boxes are representing words, if you have uh, a lot of words in a sentence, and let's say you have a revia, and I'll just make the revia like a little dot this time, and make this the ethnach, and then let's make a zakef uh, uh, katon maybe here. This is a little bit too crowded, really, but uh, the revia, of course, is a, a nice break. It's pretty strong, pretty powerful. And uh, obviously, you're going to want to group the words, uh, you know, af uh, af before it, really. And then I would group these words together, and then I'd group these last two words together. But ultimately, again, you're going to have to group all these words. But again, by breaking them up into little segments, it makes it much easier to read. And so the Revia is, a, again, a very important uh, accent. Um, people can pretty well put the Revia where they want to, and that's what's important about it. Uh, just like the Zakaif. They're pretty independent. You can place them where you need to place them for purposes of emphasis and, again, for proper grouping of words. And so the placement of the revia is very important. Now, when we come to the tifcha, its placement's a little different. Uh, the tifcha occurs um, near the saluk and near the athnach. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say this is the last word of a sentence, and so that's a sofasuk with a saluk. The tifcha either has to be right before the saluk, or it could occur here, um, you know, two words away from the saluk. So it's either one word or two words away from the word with saluk. And it's either, it's either going to be here or here. It's not going to be in both places. And so its placement is somewhat fixed in the text, and you have to remember that. Uh, sometimes it's an important accent, at other times it's not, because again, its placement is fixed. Whereas with, again, the Revia and the Zakefs th uh, and the Ethnach, they're not fixed. They're placed there um, where it's important to place them. Same thing when it comes to an Ethnach segment. You have the word with the Ethnach, and again, you can get the Tifcha uh, either one word away or two words away. And again, it is a breaker, and uh, so if you, get, if you get the Tifcha, let's say, here, uh, then really you want to make sure that these two words uh, or these words kind of go together. It's really the break is here, and you want these two words to clearly go together. And this word uh, may be going with words over here. It's just according to what's, uh, if you have a zakef or if you have some other strong accent here, uh, there may be a break. But really, uh, watch those uh, tifchas because, again, it is, it is cutting things up. But... Uh, uh, again, with, with the tifcha, its placement is somewhat fixed, and therefore its importance in helping you with syntax is not as great, again, as the revia or the zakef, but yet it's a, an accent that needs to be noticed because at times it can be very important, especially in short sentences. Well, that's it for Chapter 20 with the Vav consecutive and the revia and the tifcha. Now, of course, you need to make sure you've read the chapter well, looked at the questions, and do the drills.